when i gave my first gmat official mock i had scored a 550 and that was the day i kind of realized okay maybe i need to take a step back and something is terribly wrong now the one thing i was literally struggling uh, post 3 months into prep was data insights right uh, which also came at a surprise to me because i was like it's quite a basic subject there's nothing like you can prepare about it why i'm getting it wrong so every time i used to see i'm getting those two right and one wrong so particularly i'll be very honest verbal is something i improved because of top 1% because i was missing out on that structure so without that i would not have scored that as well so thank you so much for joining me today big congratulation a 100 percentile score yeah this is like awesome a uh, 735 on your gmat and it has been a slight uh, some time since you got this score we've, uh, we've celebrated a big time but here you are yeah. to talk about your gmat journey what a wonderful uh, you know the lineup of the score here's what we can see quantitative 95th percentile uh, verbal 99th percentile brilliant this is data inside 96th percentile so tell me how do you feel about this score yeah uh, how uh, you know 100th percentile how are you feeling like it's been an amazing feeling to be very honest so like uh, i didn't ever thought that i'll crack that score to be very honest uh, in fact i have never scored that number even in my mocks so it was quite a thrilling experience in fact when i just and ended up score, seeing that marks on the screen i was for a moment shocked that how, how could i make that score uh, yeah so overall has been a great one amazing uh so i would like to just go about you i mean i would want you to speak about your background a bit very interesting profile you you are a chartered accountant you cleared all the cfa level so you go you know take us through how did that happen and then you know we i come across a lot of students who are chartered accountant and they they have this doubt whether mba is for me or not and um, this is even while they are clearing their cfa levels right you already are accomplished ca and now an mba yeah. how did that kind of plan out for you so so uh, so basically from a family background only i have a lot of chartered accountants in my family so that, that is the first thing that comes up whenever somebody takes a commerce in my family so uh, so uh, i pursued chartered accountancy uh, basically taking on that journey further so uh, during that my ca journey i felt that i used to audit a lot of mutual funds actually during my internship days so that kind of excited me into equities and public markets and all that and i used to kind of and we those fund managers so i thought let me try and gain some understanding into cfa and i used to stay in one of the hostels in mumbai that kind of further inspired me in that journey because a lot of people used to be doing additional courses and i thought maybe cfa is something i could to, i should take a crack at so i pursued cfa post that uh, while i was doing my ca and cfa uh, I, i used to see a lot of people doing industrial training so huh. they used to do it from jp morgan so that used to be like a like crazy experience we used to see people doing ib and all that so i thought i also want to get into this field oh, everybody wants to get there so i used to always think about that so uh, luckily uh, maybe it's about manifesting only post my ca i got into jp morgan right uh, so that. i ended up with jp morgan investment banking which i always wanted to get into i spent like good two two and a half year more than that rather uh, with jp morgan i was working with the london team there and i used to see a lot of mbas out there who were basically like uh, upskilling themselves and were getting the right set of portfolio of job i'll say that correct so i thought that mba is something that i'm missing maybe and as a natural succession you'll also appreciate that when you want to get into a private equity role to say so you need an mba because the consultants who are on the hiring hunch they kind of don't appreciate if you are not an mba i don't know why right. but yeah that was the reason so i wanted to get into private equity and didn't want that kind of a glass ceiling to be very honest to hurt my career so that led me to an mba and yeah that's been so far what a fantastic line of thought i mean this is this is definitely going to be very inspiring to a lot of students because sometimes right we can only suggest that this could be your line of possibly this could be the line in which you can go but here you are already manifesting and then even uh, you know getting through it uh, yeah. really i hope the you know the next bit is to be able to get an admit and then you know get the best of the admits mm. and i hope uh, the choices that you have you should be spoiled for it like you know the m7 schools and so let's go through and you know deep, deep dive into the gmat preparation uh, tell me initially when you started what were your challenging areas and um, and how did you overcome i'm guessing quant would have been your strength but how was it otherwise so yeah so bit of a background there so i was pursuing cat 
prior to this so uh, mba was my main agenda actually uh, so i took a crack at cat so of course my quants kind of uh, went miles ahead when it came to cat so when i basically hopped on to gmat so i found that cat was quite, uh, from cat the quants were quite quite doable from for me the one thing i was literally struggling uh, post three months into prep was data insights right uh, which also came at a surprise to me because i was like it's quite a basic subject there's nothing like you can prepare about it why i'm getting it wrong so every time i used to see i'm getting those two right and one wrong all right <laughs> so every other time so data insights is one thing i was struggling with and verbal of course uh, was one thing I, i had to work upon i'll not say it was kind of a weakness for me but of course it needed a lot of work Yeah, right right so um what specific material in through your three months of your preparation could kind of just stood out could you take through each of the section and tell us what sure. what did you actually uh, prepare so there is a set of study plan that is given to you you know there are the content that is given to you when should you be doing the app videos material and finally the portal but how did you go about it so uh, so when i when it came to the prep i'm kind of a more of a i'm i think i am quite disciplined when it comes to the prep so i kind of religiously followed the program which was offered by top one person there so i uh, went through all the materials that you had shared the pre post and every material which you shared but i kind of rushed through it i'll say <laughs> but yeah that went great post that i think the materials i majorly refer to were the top one person only i didn't go a lot of uh, beyond those materials to say so So the strategy that you employed for the verbal section, you said that when you initially started because you had the experience of giving care or preparing for the exam, uh, quant was naturally good. Di a little bit. How what how was the position of verbal and wh- how did you kind of get overcome that? Yeah, so initially uh, I had a feeling that I'll do reasonably well in verbal, but uh, you guys have that trial, right? so that day i kind of got a jolt so maybe okay i need to work upon it <laughs> again and kind of brush up my skills so uh, initially even post my 3 months of uh, the tutorials and all that uh, when i gave my first gmat official mock i had scored a 550 and that was the day i kind of realized okay maybe i need to take a step back and something is terribly wrong now so uh, that day onwards i kind of rebooted myself when it came to the verbal and i kind of followed what sandeep had given me quite honestly in verbal it has been fantastic that way so i had followed that pattern i went back to that that habit of building it into my way of working out for the last 3 months i had been doing it the way i had always been tuned to do it but i realized that that is a gap i maybe need to fill in and kind of help me I, i'll say so So, uh, how long has it been from the first test that you gave five five eighty five that you said in the official GMAT to five fifty five fifty five fifty five fifty five? Um, yeah, 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 something in I don't recall exactly, but yeah, something around five fifty I remember. So, when did that? How long was the transition to finally getting a seven thirty five? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so 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 uh, I started around April, but because of the limitations of my job, the kind of working hours I am uh, exposed to, uh, it. this whole journey must have taken 6 months since i started in april around uh, so i must have got that score around i'll say august september okay so uh, that's quite an interesting story so i was like uh, when i got that 555 odd marks i was like okay the, this some because all my friends said that you will easily score a 700 on the first official mock it's quite easy and when i got that score i took a step back and i was like okay is this something extremely wrong with, with what i am doing with my prep and yeah from then on i kind of uh, engage with friends as well as a few of your mentors as well and kind of worked on that score to understand where the gaps are and kind of fill those gaps over the next 3 months maybe so it took about 3 more months to get the 755 yeah, yeah i i'll okay. say so september in fact i had appeared uh, this is my second attempt to say so so i had appeared just 15 days previous to this Right, and I had a six fifty five in that six fifty five, and then a seven thirty five. Great, okay. and then so, it went to seven thirty five. Right, amazing. So I also want to just uh, probably highlight on this because again, a lot of students are like, but I've gone through these questions set again. How can I go through it again? Uh, you know, one more time. Mm-hmm. I remember all the answers, but you just mentioned you've gone through each of these questions set three times at least. So, yeah. um, how how did you go over it? Did you uh did you have the Did you have the feeling that oh well I know all the answers, but how did you actually go about going through it three times? Yeah. yeah. So when it came to data inside, what I understood was that there is no pattern or 
a methodology to study it, right? It's more of a practice game that you need to just kind of practice, practice, practice. That that is the only thing you can do about it. Because right. you don't know what questions will be coming that day. So uh, my simple ideology was that I'll practice as much as possible. There might be a question or odd question that I might recall from my memory, but end of the day, you still have 13 more questions to address. So for me, that was it. And second thing was, I want, I was feeling that maybe I'm just lacking on the concentration part of it because there were three parts to every question, right? So I was getting two right every time I was missing out on the third question. So I thought that maybe just practicing it and kind of imbibing that concentration part of it will help me. So I kind of practiced it again and again, so that I'm right there when I'm appearing for the exam. Perfect. So that is what I felt and like coming to repetitiveness of that, I'll say even the 800 questions of points I've done two times because, uh, because what happened was I mentioned, uh, first time when I got a 555, uh, I had a word with Ayush, I guess from top one person. And he told me that he, he was quite frank about it. And I kind of appreciate that as well. He told me you kind of rushed up through the material. He asked me, have you done this? Have you done this? And I was like, yes, 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 yes. I've done everything. How did I, didn't I score that marks in that 555? So he's like, you kind of rushed up through the material. You need to go back. So right. I even attempted the 800 level questions again right. for the quants. And because the volume of the questions is so much, I don't think one can even recall all the questions. You might have a few questions here and there. You might be able to recall, but end of the day, it's more about building that out, I guess. Very important point to touch base that, you know, you can't rush through the material. When you are doing yeah. it, you do it with ease because then you can rush through probably the last stages but not during the initial stages mm -hmm. because then that will really mm -hmm. cost you another attempt <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it, it did honestly in my case this is one of the major learnings that i took from this exam that I kind of initially i was like i'll wind it up in three four months and it kind of paid, it, it kind of hurt me and i it, it took me six months <laughs> so right. that is one major learning that you can't rush up so tell me about this. Uh, this is all the material and study and strategy, which was all structured. How did you go about it uh, when you, you also had a very demanding job? What was your personal routine type to uh, towards the GMAT? When did you exactly study every single day? How did you go about the mock test? How long did you take? Did so, you have a um, break also <laughs> at all? Not really, not really. Uh, so that way, uh, I had a very standard layout plan that I'll be studying every day. Right. Be it for one hour, one hour, but I'll be studying every day. So I did ensure that I might have a couple of odd breaks, like a day or two in between, but I tried to ensure that I'm studying every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the mocks as well, I had planned that because the job didn't allow. So I used to take the mocks on weekends. So, and I, in fact, at the end of the, like, uh, during the end of the journey, when I was about to appear for the official, I tried to ensure that I'm giving even the mocks during the same time frame. Because my time frame of exam was around 2 p.m. And that's when I think the mind doses of the most. So <laughs> last three mocks, I tried to ensure that I'm appearing right in that set. So right. I think, yeah, I ensured that I was studying every day rather. Right. Now, uh, so in terms of your doubts and questions, another thing before I speak about it, I yeah. because you mentioned that your friends were there and of course there were faculty as well. How did they come in picture in terms of supporting? This is, we are talk we're still talking about support uh, through your preparation. Mm -hmm. Friends, family. Overall, yeah, absolutely. Like friends and family plus uh, the faculty has been like, uh, like the backbone. I'll I'll put it this way through this journey because uh, getting a five fifty five in my first official mock to this journey, of course, has been a big leap that way. So I kind of reached out to top one person fa faculty when I felt that I am missing out something, or maybe at times I also got frustrated. I'll be very honest that I am not able to like improve my score. I'm doing every bit of it. So that time kind of the faculty helped me a lot with identifying, see, just practice this. Don't take big targets, at least just practice this part of it. And then maybe we connect later on and then kind of take this journey ahead. And family and friends, and of course, have been always been the biggest supporter because a couple of my friends were also pursuing GMAT actually. Right. Uh, so they kind of helped me identify like, how do you evaluate this? when you get that ESR report for, for the official GMAT mocks as well. So they kind of helped me evaluate, like, how do you even look at that report? Uh, so I was not aware, like, okay, you need to look at it from that perspective and then build on it. Right. So yeah, that way it has been super helpful. Amazing. So you said you've exploited the entire portal as well. Uh, how did it really help yeah. you overall yeah. when you, before the exam day or, you know, the first attempt, the second attempt, how did the portal kind yeah. of really help you? Um, did you have any, so given you are attempting an exam, did you see any difference or no difference at all in terms of the UI, UX, feel, touch and feel of the exam? 
No, so uh, on the UX part, I'll say it's more or less similar only. Right. Uh, the good part of the portal, which I really like was like uh, the volume of questions which are available, right? So, uh, and the, I'll say the difficulty level about those questions. So initially I used to also feel like kind of these are two tough questions. These won't be addressed in the exam. I am trying to basically address these questions. But lately I realized maybe this is just building out that concentration, which I'm lacking onto. So I must have appeared for like three, four mocks, official mocks, not of not the official, the top one person mocks. And apart from that, I use those long settings, the verbal and the RC long settings and all the practice, practice questions, which are there, like the sectionals and the topic wise test. So I'll say from the UX perspective and from the comprehensiveness of the coverage, it's absolutely great. Uh, yeah, but I did find that difficulty a bit notch up from the exam perspective. You're right. Let's just take a minute. Um, I think uh, the internet is good from your end. Can you just check once? Yeah, uh, I can hear better. you loud and clear. Uh, yeah, but because it was just going red and yellow. So <laughs> I just wanted oh, to... Sorry. All right. So um, here's the bit. So on the final day, I mean, this is like two times it's happened. But tell me the first time yeah. that you attempted when you got the 665 score. What was, what didn't work for you in that, in your favor? And what did you do drastically, uh, you know, a difference in 16 days that you kind of had a jump from a 665, which is about, you know, 80-ish percentile in 80s to, or oh, yeah, a little bit above 90, maybe close to 90 percentile to 100 yeah. percentile score. So what changed between those two days was uh, like, there's a backdrop to it. Since I mentioned that I was preparing for CAD previously and had even appeared for IIM Ahmedabad's interview last year. Right. So right. that kind of didn't work out. So I was kind of carrying that burden also that, that I was not able to make it finally. So in the first attempt, I thought that I had a bit of those nerves as well when I was appearing for the exam and quants, which used to be my best section in GMAT, I kind of tanked it. I had scored, I guess, 64 percentile. Oh, in that exam also, my verbal was 99 percentile. Oh, wow. Okay. So it kind of, it was just quants, uh, which took the nerves in the first section and post second and third section, I did fairly well and kind of tried to manage it out on that day as well. But what changed between the first and second was I didn't prepare for seven or eight odd days post getting that score. Just let it <laughs> relax, thing, relax your nerves. Yeah, yeah, I just left. Actually, I appeared right before Diwali. Right. And I was like, okay, I have a decent score that if I want to get into ISB, uh, maybe I have a good chance. I, I'll make it that way or maybe... I'll appear again, but I knew I had a safe score. Okay, now I can just improve from it. There's no going back from where it is. So that kind of maybe boosted my confidence. I'm quite relaxed, relaxed, I'll say. Honestly, I didn't even prepare for the last 16 days. I just appeared from one official mock. That was it. Uh, I didn't, and in that I had scored around 725 and I just carried that confidence on that day. <laughs> that was the, just the prep, prep I did between that 16 days. One, of the, one of the biggest le learning lesson is the, you know, you need to really relax through. Uh, true, second true, second true. learning lesson about this is that don't rush yeah. in first, this, of course, and relax just before the exam. You yeah. need that. That's what Sandeep says, say, have a good night's sleep. Make sure that your body is really, really yeah. relaxed. Don't think it as another exam. Think it as another mock if you've been practicing another mock. So I think all of these kind of really look at that. I mean, otherwise absolutely. it would have saved one attempt at least, but a fantastic. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, absolutely. you know, the dream of an I am Madhabath to now, I think I'm sure you're looking at not just Indian schools, but outside India as well. So, uh, what are your target schools now? So, I'm looking at the M7s for now. Uh, so, the deadline is fast approaching. So, I'm a bit con conscious of that as well. Like, whether I should go for this round or maybe round one of next year. So, yeah, that is one thing. And I'm looking at the M7s, of course. And private equity because I want to basically build out a career out here. So, those what in Columbia booth is something I really aspire to get into. But fingers All crossed. East Coast. Uh, so yeah. you're at the US. Any any ch chance that you're also applying to London? Because London so uh, as I mentioned, I, initially I didn't have international aspirations. To be very honest with you, right? Uh, I was quite okay. I just wanted my career in private equity to be there. I didn't want that glass ceiling to be there, so I didn't explore a lot. So that is why, from that angle, I'm kind of exploring round one next year. Rather, I'm not very choosy about getting into this year itself, and I don't mind going next year as well. So you from know, that angle, I'll explore that next you year. do apply because you don't get to lose on anything and you don't want to yeah. get in. Obviously, next year you can say, well, you know, my situation was very different. I had a lot of work to complete here. And so mm -hmm. I didn't choose the admit. But you all, at least you have an admit and a little, you know, a little I bit understand. of 
extra weightage there. But I glad, I mean, all this happened. So good to speak to you. Uh, an amazing, uh, you know, journey, I would say. Really loved it. And one of the things I think uh, two, three students I spoke to earlier this morning, they were just speaking about, should I be, uh, you know, re-attempting any questions? I'm not very thorough. Everything have been has been completely said by someone who scored. Definitely so useful. All the tips that you've shared, all your experiences will definitely help a lot of other students. And here's wishing you okay. all the very best. I hope you, like I said, all M7 or at least all the schools that is there in the East Coast, um, yeah. especially around the finance bit, you should be able to crack it. Um, and uh, thank you so much for choosing Sandeep Sir uh, and Top 1% as your mentor yeah. to, through your GMAT journey. Um, any, any last uh, message for Sir? you have of course he has a big mm. congratulation message is supremely proud of you uh, and he's really humbled by this score it validates what he's doing but any message from you that i would like you'd like to pass on yeah no like it's been a tremendous journey uh, and i think top one person as i mentioned has helped me like to leaps and bounds uh, particularly verbal from that 555 to getting to a 99 percentile of course speaks about the kind of contribution which top one person particularly i'll be very honest verbal is something i improved because of top one person because I was missing out on that structure. So without that, I would not have scored that as well. So like a lot of it goes to top and percent. And I like to really thank you all for being there and being very supportive around it and being peaceful and being patient with my <laughs> kind of. So thank you so much for that. He's such a nice person. You you know, it feels so good to speak to you and you have very good clarity of thought. And I think it would lead you such a long, long way. We'll keep connected. We'd be really happy Definitely. to see uh, the kind of progression that you make in life. Uh, wishing you all the very best and thanking you so much for joining me today. Good Thank luck. you so much, Natasha. Bye, take care. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye, take care.